great way to build your brand online is by hosting events with Meetup. Being able to connect with people on a personal level is always a concern of any business. It's difficult when you're a business which has many customers. How do you hold events with customers all over the world and still offer a high level of personalization? You do it using Meetup. It brings crowds of people together over the internet. That means people from all over the globe can attend your meetings and you don't have to go anywhere. I've created a step-by-step -step video series which will teach you everything you need to launch your own event with Meetup. So let me help you accelerate your success today. Hello and welcome. You are now looking at Meetup.com. And Meetup is designed for individuals to start groups around specific activities and interests. What's different about Meetup than most information-based activities is that all of the activity on Meetup is designed to take place offline and in person. Meetup states that groups should offer a growth opportunity of some kind. It also states that individuals should be looking to create real human connections between others. Now the stated position of Meetup is that connecting online is not the same as connecting in real life and that meetups need to meet locally and in person and not solely for webinars and online meetings. Additionally, this is designed for you the host to be present at the events and that all intentions and activities should be upfront, specifically fees and dues and any membership requirements. And of course, there are specific prohibited groups and activities for meetups using the meetup website. And these are things that you should be reading through before you choose to start a meetup. Now, although the company operates online, its location is in New York City. And currently, according to Meetup, there are 40 million members on the platform and over 320,000 groups. Now, in order to start a meetup, there is a financial cost associated with it. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to start looking at the pricing. And to do that, you're going to want to click this link that says start a new group. Once you get to the new group, you're going to determine where you want that new group to meet. And you're going to write in the town or city where you want the group to meet. And then you're going to click next. What you're then going to do is you're going to write what your meetup is going to be about. And once you write in your keyword, what you're going to see is you're going to see that there are going to be certain titles available to you. You're going to pick some of those titles which best reflect what you want your group to be about. And once you've filled in enough categories as to what your group will be about, you'll then click Next. You're then going to write the name of your meetup and then you're going to write in a description of who you want to join the meetup. Now, obviously, you'll want to write in as much information as you can because this will make your group searchable. Also, Meetup has what it feels is an ideal description, and you'll be able to see those descriptions here. So once you've completed your description, you'll then click the Next button. Now, basically, Meetup's requirements are fairly simple, that your meetings, for the most part, will be in person. Once again, this does not prohibit you from doing online meetings. However, the focus and the goal of the meetup should be in-person conversations. Once you do that, you'll then click Agree and Continue. Now, as of the recording of this video, you can either have an unlimited plan or a basic plan. Now, one thing you'll want to keep in mind is that as an organizer, you will be able to lead up to three meetup groups with an organizer subscription plan. And you can either pay on a monthly basis or you can pay less if you choose to pay six months at a time. Now, if you choose to pay less, you can take the basic plan. And this is going to be limited to 50 members and four organizers in a particular group. This also allows you to pay every six months as well as monthly, except that the cost will be slightly less than if you did the unlimited plan. Once you confirm your subscription, you'll then have a paid meetup and you'll then be ready to get started. 
Now, there are two important aspects of your profile. One of those aspects is your bio. And you're going to be able to click this link to write in the bio that you want to be here. Now, you're going to want to take note that this bio will be searchable in search engines as well as in Meetup. So you want to take care in what you want people to see about what you're trying to project using Meetup. Now, what you'll note about your bio is that you have 250 characters. So you don't have a lot of space to write here. You just want to make sure that it's accurate and that it is keyword searchable. Now the other thing that you may not be interested in others knowing about in terms of you being the meetup organizer are your interests. If that's the case, what you're going to do is you're going to click this link that says hide interest on profile. Once you've done that, you won't see it inside of your edit screen, but you will have it so that individuals will not be able to see your interest in meetup. You'll notice is the case by looking at this link and if it says show interest on profile, you'll need to click this in order to toggle back. Now the same thing is true if you don't want others to know all of the meetups that you're involved in as an organizer. And if you do that, what you can do is you can click this link that says hide meetup groups on profile. What this now means is that individuals will not be able to see the other groups that you're going to be a part of on your profile. If you are in the group, they'll know you're part of the group. However, they will not be able to find out any of the other groups that you are a part of. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we are going to look at your profile settings. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to your profile area by pulling your drop down menu. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click on the settings area. Now, the most important aspect of your settings is that the image that you're going to place here is going to be the one that everyone is going to see when you are looking to make comments, apply to be part of other meetups, or when people are going to want to apply to your meetup. So you're going to want to make sure that your photo is reflective of what you want people to see. Now in terms of the kinds of meetups that you are going to see being created in your local area, that will be determined primarily by setting your interest. And meetups will show you those groups that you're going to be most interested in. And so if you want to add in an interest, what you're going to do is you're going to write that interest in here. And then you're going to look to find out if meetup has something that you're interested in. And when you write in your keyword, meetup is going to give you suggestions on interests that are already available on the platform. What you can also do is determine how far you want meetup to look. You can bring the radius in as close as two miles or go as far out as 100 miles. Now you have to bear in mind that this is an offline activity. So the closer you have results, the better. Now you can decide whether you want to be shown to individuals on Facebook and you're going to tick this box. And what you can do is you can connect your Facebook account to this meetup account that you are using in order to create meetings. And what we're going to do here is we're going to stop the video and we're going to pick it up by looking at the rest of your settings. We've now completed the general settings for your Meetup account. We're now going to pick it up from the email updates and we're going to go through the rest of the profile setting. What you can also do is set up email updates and anything that you want to have available to you, you can have Meetup send you an email. You can also determine how Meetup sends you email about the individual groups that you are starting as well as those that you are participating in. Now, you can also choose to have push notifications sent to you on your mobile device if you have the app downloaded. The privacy settings can be important because you may want to have a certain level of anonymity until you get to know people and you can control some of those activities here in the privacy settings. Now it's in the social media settings where you'll be able to allow individuals to follow you either personally or in your business. And Meetup gives you five profiles to update. You can do Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Flickr, and Tumblr. Now all you're going to do is you're going to click these check boxes. That's going to give you the opportunity to log into your account and connect it to Meetup. So in this case, all we would do is to click on any of the social media accounts that we actually have. 
So in the case of Twitter, what you're going to do is you're going to put your link in here. In the case of LinkedIn, you're going to need to log into your account. In the case of Facebook, you're going to need to be connected to your Facebook account. Flickr, what you're going to do is put in the link to your ID. And the same is going to be true with Tumblr. Once you've done that, you'll then have connected your social media. Now to receive payments from sponsors as well as contributors, you will need to set up your Amazon Payments account and you can do that in this area. Of course, you can take the payments in any way that you want, but if you want to take them through the Meetup account, you can set them up through Amazon Payments. Which means then that you'll need to sign up with Amazon Pay as a merchant. And you'll need to set up your Amazon Seller Central account to set up your Amazon Pay account. Now, if you have any third party applications connected to your Meetup account, you'll see them in this area. If you want to disconnect them, you'll be able to click this button that says Revoke Access. And it's here where you'll be able to link to the Android and or iPhone link for your mobile device so you can operate Meetup there also. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video.